Bridget, Cody, how familiar are you with the 1980s hit Small Wonder? I know enough about it that it wasn't a hit, <laughs> but it's like a little robot girl. Yeah, tiny yes. robot. That's exactly yeah. right, yes. This was a show about a normal nuclear family, except one of the kids in the family was a robot that the dad had built at his office and brought back home and raised as his daughter. And everyone else, uh, nobody else was in the know, and it's impossible that they don't know, because she's constantly outing herself. It, wait, does the, does the family know? The family knows, okay. yes. And the way that she talks is how you'd imagine an eight-year-old imagining a robot. <clears throat> she talks like this a lot, and it's very uh -huh. monotone. It's basically like a show that put back our understanding of autism by like nine or 10 years. Oh no, <laughs> okay. Okay. Everybody who then saw a kid like this was like, oh, that's a robot, for sure. <laughs> They're small wondering us. So I want to talk to you about a specific episode of this show called Woodward and Bernstein. It's also called Girl on the Milk Carton. They never, they wavered around on the title. They never really got one. They nailed, they never nailed <laughs> what? it. What? They never wavered. <laughs> That's what, so this is a fascinating episode. The main plot of it is that the young boy in the family, uh, the robot's brother, sure, he's trying to do a report for school, and if you do the best journalism report, you win an award. Mm, yeah. And he and his buddy make up a story about how there's like horse meat in the kitchen. Mm. And then they get in a lot of trouble for that. And so now they gotta redeem themselves and come up with a better story. And the better story is the B plot of this, which is a new girl comes to school, this girl Chrissy. Turns out she's a missing kid. She also that. doesn't know she's missing. Yes. I better go home and ask my dad about this. Okay. Oh so, no. Oh. She's moved into this town, and she is a missing girl. Uh, her dad has clearly kidnapped her and taken her away, and and. She's never questioned it, like why she's left her mom or anything yeah. like that. This then becomes the joke throughout the rest of the episode, where the boys discover this milk carton on the table and they're like, we need a story. Too bad there's not one right under our noses. And then they find out that this girl's a missing child. And instead of doing anything about it, instead of bringing it to the attention of anybody, they're like, this is our scoop. Oh, and my they, want, they want that A. They write the story about this, bring it to school thinking, we're gonna get a sweet award for this. Oh no. And the principal comes up to them and says, uh, did you make this story up too? Is this like no. the horse meat situation? They say, no, 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 it's real. They call Chrissy's family. The, Chrissy's dad gets spooked and takes off with her again. Oh my God. This is pretty much how the episode ends. <laughs> the only saving grace is at the very end. Why is he getting a cake? Oh, because they got the award. Nice. They won, he, is... And then dad made them a cake. Oh. But I feel so bad. Bad about Chrissy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's a kidnapped child. Now you guys are gonna feel a lot better when you bury your face in a big piece of that cake, huh? Really good point. <laughs> the dad is trying to make them feel better about the whole situation by saying you'll feel much better by burying your face in this cake. Forget about that little Chrissy girl. I know you had a huge crush on her, and also it's a really tragic situation that she has with her family, <laughs> but forget about her. And if you look at the time code here, we're at now 2046 of an episode that's only 22 minutes long. <laughs> and it's like, how are we gonna They've got a lot this? of work to do. Right, so here's how they decided to resolve it. Terrific news, everyone. The police found Chrissy and her father, and she's going to be reunited with mom. So, now everyone's <laughs> pumped and they're gonna eat cake. That's not the end of that story by any means. She's oh. reunited with her mother. That means, I mean, she, this is a father that she's always known as her father, that she's loved, that clearly she was living with for a while and yeah. took her right. away. He's going to jail. Like, this, that's, he's going yeah. to prison for this. Right, so her world has been torn apart. Twice. In Torn asunder. <laughs> yeah, and who knows what her mom is like. I mean, that relationship clearly is fractured in some capacity. Yeah. But it's way, way worse now, and this girl belongs to the system now. The episode is just like, you know what? It doesn't matter. They're all gonna eat cake here at the end. They're gonna smush it on each other's faces yeah. like this is their wedding. Oh, he gets yeah. his face smashed oh, oh. Oh, by the robot. Because the robot doesn't. Smash in the cake, and then everyone, it's everyone, everyone laughs. laughing, this except is for now. the creepy robot child. Right. She and has then, no emotion. and then credits roll. It's a really dark episode. That's no, no one in the show clearly at any stage realized that it was a dark episode. I mean, the actors yeah. aren't playing it like that. The writer didn't write it like that. The director wasn't at any point like, okay, well, we're gonna have to change the tone of this. Yeah, a little up bit. your like emotion a little bit. And that wasn't out of the question that there would be sitcoms back in that time that would handle these things very seriously. Yeah. I think that it was in response to other people who were doing very special episodes about missing kids. And they were like, oh yeah, we should probably do one of those. <laughs> and right. like, they did a few rails of coke and then they were like, oh, let's just crank out a script. <laughs> he, gets a, he gets a phone call and everything's fine. I'm not like a big fan of Small Wonder. I'm not, uh, I don't- I am, I, go ahead. I, I, a Wonderhead. I, I don't binge Small Wonder. I'm not a Wonderhead, thank wonder you. Head. Does she do robot stuff in the episode that affect the story? Like, is she like- 
almost exclusively as tangential. There are a lot of episodes where they were just like, all right, well, we already did all the robot stuff, so now let's just do some other things. <laughs> so they took the robot out mm -hmm. to give it more weight. <laughs> <laughs> I love the early 80s idea of what AI is. <laughs> yes. That Elon Musk is like, when he finally rolls out his robot, it's just gonna be the small wonder girl. <laughs> Right? Uh, that's what, that's that. what we were afraid of this yeah. whole time. It's just all our self-driving cars are. You, you actually, we don't realize that the, you won't be able to sit in the driver's seat because right. she'll be there. <laughs> she'll be there looking at milk cartons, being like, "Is this you? <laughs> Is this you?" <laughs> hey, everybody! Thank you for watching that episode. You can always click on the C in the middle of the screen to subscribe for more. You can also hit that bell. That'll let you know when we have more videos coming up or you can check out any of the other videos going on the right rail over there. You can see maybe other stuff that's recommended to you based on your previous likes or other cracked videos. We prefer those.